Hello everybody and welcome to the channel for another video, uh, especially thanks to all my subscribers if you're returning again to watch this. So what am I going to use here? Okay, pen and paper, of course, NX8 transmitter, and I have the FMS 1700PA18 Super Cub, it's just what I'm going to be configuring. So, and I'm just going to use a 4S battery, it might not be the recommended size, but it's just for setting up the electrics, okay. Uh, the PA18 from FMS has a built-in reflex unit. We have the reflex version 2. I'll show you a picture of that right now. So it has to stay in the position it's in in the plane because this is what's doing the uh, stabilization of the plane. So it has to be in the correct position. If you didn't have the reflex unit, you could put in a different receiver that has a built-in stabilization and then you need to put it again in the correct position when you configure it but right now we're going to use the default plane the way it comes with the reflex and just hook it up as if you just want the simplest way to hook it up out of the box here is my receiver i'm going to use this is the ar620 from spectrum there's a little button on it okay um and here we have six channels we're going to use all six, okay? Uh, that's it, it's very small. You can just put a little stick of Velcro or something on the back, that's what I do, and stick it in the plane. It doesn't matter the location of this because there's no gyros or stability in it, okay? So just remember, we have six channels in here. So when we set up our six channels on our transmitter, they're going to talk to these six channels on this, and then I'm going to plug them in accordingly. So I have already decided basically what I'm going to do. I have written it down here on my notepad. So channel number one will be throttle, number two aileron, number three elevator, and so on. Okay, let's have a look at that then. So here on my NX8, I'm gonna press these two buttons at the same time. That brings me into the new model. So I'm going to add a new model here. You could, of course, if you had a bind and file plane, add that, or if you had a safe template, add that. For the purpose of this video, we're just going to add a new model. So it went out of that menu again. Okay, add a new model. And model type, airplane, that's good. Okay, I could go back here, click this, and change it if I wanted it lighter or something like that. But right now, we're basing this on the FMS 1700 PA Super Cub. Okay, let's create this, and it takes a second to create. There we go, so model select I don't need now, I don't need model type, model name I'm going to go into, so let's click on this, and I'm going to scroll across here. So you have back button, you have the name, click on the name here, and now we can change it. Scrolling across, F, and then M, S. And if you want to go up and down, your left and right in the menu is here. If you want to go up and down, just hold down the function key, and then you can go up and down. Okay, so down to space, and I'll type the rest of this. We can skip it in the video. So I've typed that in, FMS 1.7 PA. Dash 18 Super Cub. You can give it whatever name you like. That's just what I've chosen to give it. Now we press the back key, which is this one, and press the back key again. Now that's saved. That's my uh, aircraft name. The next thing we're going to do is go to aircraft type. So this aircraft actually has several servos, uh, two controlling the flaps and two controlling the ailerons. We don't need to use that because we're only using, this is more what channels you're using, okay? So what channels we're going to be using is basically one channel for the wings, ailerons, and one channel for the flaps, okay? That's because the PA-18 comes with only one channel connector, okay, for the ailerons. Uh, most planes would come with two, okay, and if you change your controller, it might be like that. So it's not really based here on, do I only have two servos? No, it's based on the channels that you're using, okay? So 
that's good one aileron one flap let's go back out of that you can go in there again just to check it's saved so let's go back again and now if i press this button here it's going to bring me into the menu for this plane okay and now i'm going to go to throttle cut so throttle cut switch you can click here and you can scroll up and down and pick whatever switch you want okay they are all labeled i'm going to use this switch here if you don't want to read the labels what you can do is when you're in this switch menu here okay um just hit the switch see and it's changed to h click again on this that's h okay there's my position you can see it changing and let's go back now we want to check that that worked okay so i'll go back to the main screen again and i can go to scrolling left and right i can go to the monitor page this is a very useful page instead of learning on the airplane what's going on so my throttle now here should be this one okay you can see my throttle is up down okay and if i put my throttle up if i hit throttle kill now it should just turn the throttle completely off there we go throttle off so no matter what i do here my throttle is not going to move okay until i turn on my throttle there by disabling throttle cut and now it works okay so that's the first thing that we want to do and the most important thing that we want to check okay the next thing now is my ailerons left and right okay there's my aileron moving you can see i only have one aileron here because i've only used one channel for the ailerons because that's what we have in the plane okay elevator that's uh elevator down bringing the nose up elevator forward pushing the nose of the plane down so that's working on channel number three rudder is here so rudder changing that you can see that's moving okay that's great my gear switch i use this switch over here okay which is on aux 2 now so i want to change that and my flap switch i want to use this switch which is not doing anything yet so let's go back out of the monitor and back into the planes menu now we're going to go down to flap system okay i like to use this button here for my flaps you can use whatever button you like i'm using a three bay button so i will have three positions on the flaps forward will be my flaps up this will be half flaps this will be full flaps okay you can use whatever button you want just be aware that if you use a two position button then you will only have two positions for your flaps okay so into the flap system and now we pick our switch okay it's defaulting to switch a when i clicked on it just flicking this will bring me to switch b or of course i can change it by twisting the wheel to whatever i want i like to just flick that okay that's the switch so and this we're gonna have three positions okay that's flap position number one i can check that now by moving my switch and you see the box is moving to the different positions so flaps up are going to be and you can see it here okay? it's moving up and down okay my flaps up are going to be one minus 100 so in the spectrum minus 100 is fully up position one is going to be in the middle is zero and then position two is going to be plus 100. now if you don't want to use all the flaps you know for example you're thinking oh i want to land using full flaps but actually it's not really suitable for me i would prefer to land using 70 percent of flaps you can just change that position two to 70 percent and then you're only ever going to use 70 percent of your flaps what you also could do and some people like to do is maybe you have minus 100 flaps up and then maybe you want to make you know minus 20 and just have the first level of flaps a little bit gentler than having them halfway um so you can do that you could have minus 100 and then you could have say minus 20 and then you could have maybe plus 75 or something if you liked uh, I'm going to use the full capability of the flaps. So that's why I'm just going to do this. Now we have 
another column over here called elevator okay and this is basically elevator mix so when you flying normally everything is fine your plane is trimmed that's great but if you have a little bit of power in and you give some flaps you're going to find that the nose of the plane goes up just by adding the flaps we call this ballooning so the nose balloons up you add more flaps the nose balloons up even more you can counteract that by pushing forward on the stick but you, you don't want to be flying around holding this all the time when you have flaps so what we do over here is we change our elevator mix so i'm not going to have any elevator mix on position zero on position one i'm just going to set this so you have to play around with this basically you're going to have to fly you know up high in a straight line maybe you want your throttle 50 percent or lower uh, because you're not going to be flying at full speed with flaps and then add the first position of flaps and if it keeps ballooning up all the time then you know change your percentage here up a little bit up a little bit until eventually you you get it exactly where you want it and the plane is flying level with half flaps okay so i'm just going to use five here starting off and then position two you're going to need more so i'm going to put this at 10. now again these numbers are something that you need to test when you're flying your plane in your conditions with your battery and whatever wind is there and however you like to fly uh, so what's going to happen here now is we can see it down below okay if my flaps are up okay my elevator is you know, close to zero it's at one two it's flashing if i add now one position of flaps my elevator has moved up to six and if i add a second level of flaps my elevator has now moved to should be around 10 right 11 that's fine so that's how you would check it now you want it going in the upward direction probably right so we we'll, i'll show you how to check that later that's how you set up the flaps they're set on switch d now speed so why is this important well speed means the speed the flaps come down at so i don't want to do like full flaps and then they're like whoosh, straight down uh, when you add flaps to the plane you change the plane's flying characteristics so you Generally speaking, uh, don't want that to happen instantaneously because uh, <laughs> it might just stress you out. So I'm going to change, oh, let me go back here. Okay, you can change it to whatever you like. Some people like, you know, one or two seconds. Uh, for me, I'm just going to leave this at maybe one second. Okay. So that means when I go to full flaps, it's going to take one second before they move down. When I go half flaps, it's going to take half a second to move down. That's all that that means. Uh, you may want to put it up, you know, even three or four seconds if you want uh, when you're practicing and learning. But uh, for me, I, I like it to be fast. Not that fast, but one second is fine for me. Okay, that's that then. That's all of the flaps set up. Okay, so now if I go back again, it always helps to go back and double check here. So there's my flaps, there's my midpoint, and there's my flaps all the way down, okay? So when I say midpoint, I mean midpoint on this. So that's gonna be my flaps up, that's gonna be my flaps halfway down, it's gonna be my flaps all the way down. And what you'll see here is because of the mix I just made, my elevator is now going to move when I add some flaps and that's gonna move like that, okay? Instead of me holding this all the time and trying to gauge the position. Okay, that's pretty useful. So the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna go in here. So we have DR and Expo, what's that you may ask? That's something that I generally don't use at all actually. But here we have the aileron channel, okay? So for example, if you, you know, maybe your controller your transmitter is old and it's a bit wibbly or maybe it's freezing cold and your hands are a bit shaky or, or maybe you just don't like the responsiveness and you want it a little bit smoother so this is my aileron channel so if i go all the way to the left you'll see that my ailerons have gone all the way to the left because i'm on 100 percent rates if i go all the way to the right my aileron goes all the way to the right 
So I'll show you how that works now if I go into my rates and supposing now you see the graph changing. Okay, oh, you would probably never do this at 50%. It's just for an example for the video that you can see it better. Now, if I move this all the way to the side, you see my aileron is only doing 50% of what it could normally do. Okay, so you you know, normally you may set that at say 70% for, um, for beginners or for people who like uh, less sensitivity on the controls so now you know maximum throw so if you have somebody or a tendency to be doing this you, you know you may want to limit it so now i can go full way and i'm only hitting 70 percent of the throw on my servos for the ailerons okay you can assign that of course to a button okay so yeah i'm gonna put that back up to just for an example, okay, 80%, okay. So that's my channel for my ailerons, okay, switch. So which switch do I wanna use for this? Hmm, a two-way switch, that's switch A, or maybe a three-way switch. Let's use a three-way switch. I'm gonna use this one up here, okay. So if I move the switch, you see now it's changed to F, okay. So that's position zero, okay. For switch F. So position zero will give me full control of my ailerons. Now if I switch this to position number one, now I have 80% and you see the curve has changed so now I have just 80% of the throw. Okay. Now if I go down here and I switch it again, that's 100%, okay, so maybe I change this to 110%, you can also do that, so you can, you know, over control it, or I mean, get a bit more throw out of it. So now I go down here, say to 70%, okay? So now the way the switch works, and you'll see the way the diagram is changing, here I have full control, oh, sorry, here I have full control, I switch it down because I'm thinking, oh, the plane is jumping all over, you know, my I'm, I'm not being sensitive enough with the controls perhaps. So for comfort, I'm switching it down to 80 and now I can make bigger movements and the plane will make smaller movements basically. And I can go down here to 70 and now I make even bigger movements and the plane will make uh, not as big movements as it would when you're at 100% rates. Okay, let's switch this back up. So this is on the aileron channel. Now I'm gonna go to Expo. So what is Expo, you may ask? Well, Expo is gonna turn this straight line into a curve. So you see here, as I move this, it's a straight line for controlling the aileron channel. Now, maybe some people don't want that. Maybe maybe you like to have, you know, a, a little bit of a, not a dead zone, but a little bit of a less sensitive zone there in the middle and then, you know, more sensitivity on the ends. So let's go to Expo, for example, and if we change this, say, to 15%, let me bring it right up to 20 or to 30 so you can see better. You wouldn't normally do this, of course, because it's too much. But now you can see as I'm moving the aileron left and right, the center position is not having as much of an effect as it would previously. But as I move it out here, then it becomes more sensitive, more sensitive, more sensitive. Okay, so I still can do full control, full deflection, but just the center is gentler. You may like to do that, okay? That's another option that you have there. So now if I go Okay, press this again to get out of that. And I can do this with the ailerons, okay, on this switch, I've done it. Okay, you can see, I've set them up. Now what I can do is I can, oops, I can click here and I can change now to the elevator. So again, maybe I wanna do the same thing on the elevator. I can do the same thing on the elevator or the rudder. Let's go to the elevator and now, you know, I'm thinking, oh, the elevator on this plane is very big. I want it a little bit less sensitive. So I can go down here to the switch. Okay, now I can pick the same switch, right? If I pick the same switch, that means that, 
you know, here I have 100% and I can set up the percentages the same on the same switch. Or I could pick a different switch. Right? And then I could fly and I can say, oh, I want, uh, you know, a little bit of expo and change the rates on my ailerons. Here we go. And here I want to change the rates on my elevator with a different switch. Um, that might be making things a little bit complicated. You can do it if you really want fine tuning. Uh, most people will probably just set it all up on the one switch and then go here and I can change it to this switch. Okay, and then again, position zero would be full for me. I like that. Position one, I can go down and I can change the rates of the elevator to say 80% and you know, if I want some Expo, I can change that. Okay. Yeah, you can also go the other way with Expo and make it uh, more sensitive in the middle. Uh, people wouldn't normally do that. You generally go in the plus direction and make it less. So here it's less sensitive. And now I have my Expo rates on this switch. Okay. And I can go to the third position and put another value in there if I like. So that's DR and Expo on the plane. I don't use that, so to speak, but, uh, you know, yeah, maybe I should because it's winter and my hands are a little bit cold and they might not be so accurate. There's many, many different reasons for doing it. Okay, let's go back to the menu now. We have throttle cut on. You can put in a throttle curve. We're not going to do this. Analog switch setup, digital switch switch setup. Uh, you can go in here, of course, and change the switches to whatever you like. So here I have my AUX2, okay? And you can see it's not on the gear channel. So here, look at this again, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't have a seventh channel on this receiver, so the seventh and eight channels are not going to do anything for me, right? Now we're gonna go down to system setup. You're gonna get a warning, which means it's gonna turn off transmitting to the plane. So if you had this connected to the plane, you wanna consider that first. Okay, and now let me go to channel assign. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to next page and here, I could change, you know, if I change my throttle and aileron, and then I would just change them when I plug them into the plane. I'm not going to do that, but I did make a mistake with that in my earlier video, which you can see the shock on my face. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, so the gear, okay, I'm gonna change this now to aux two, okay? And then channel seven, I'm going to inhibit because I'm not using it. And channel eight, I'm going to inhibit because I'm not using it. So now I have throttle aileron, elevator, rudder, aux two and flaps. So let's go back here, okay. Now, if I go to my monitor page, I can double check again. Throttle is not working. Why is the throttle not working? Because my throttle cut switch is on, okay. There we go, throttle on, up and down. The default is I always cut it off. It's just like taking the keys out of the car, right? You don't want to be working on the engine with the keys and the ignition. Okay, aileron left and right, elevator good, okay. Flaps are good. And my rudder is good, okay. And that button I'm using for aux two, which is on channel one, two, three, four, five. It's on the fifth channel now, right? And in the fifth channel, I'm gonna plug in, and I've already written that down. Fifth channel is going to be my stability modes on the plane. That is assigned to this button, okay? I like a three position button because I wanted three options. So I'm gonna have auto leveling in the forward mode. I'm just gonna have say AS3X uh, in the second mode and then everything is off in the third mode. Normally, that's what I do, okay? Now, supposing, right, I can go here to digital switch setup, okay? And, okay, if I wanted, I could select the switch here, okay? And I could change some of the values on it. I don't wanna do that, but it's just a possibility, okay? So maybe, for example, if I wanted to go to 
say let's say this switch for the flaps i can also change you know the pull down position here if i wanted to and then you have the option to do some mixing so mixing can be nice uh, rudder aileron mix is quite you know um popular aileron to rudder mix is also possible so when you put a plane into a turn and my plane says going straight on due north and i turn now the ailerons the plane will tilt but the nose won't immediately turn around it's going to hesitate there for a minute because that's an uncoordinated turn to do a coordinated turn i will use a little bit of rudder at the same time that i'm putting in my ailerons there's also drag on one wing of the plane that differs from the other wing of the plane and things like that that's why you need to use rudder when you're putting your plane into a turn what you can do here is you can set it up that it automatically does that so i can have for example you know depending on how much i turn i can add five or ten percent of rudder i'm not going to do that um you can if you like but it's it's you know it's not really learning how to fly uh, in a realistic manner at least in any of the planes i've flown so now we can go to our timer menu, which is the next thing I'm going to do. Our timer is set to five minutes. You'll probably want to adjust this after you learn, you know, maybe you're flying nice and gentle for five minutes, you land and the battery is still 50% full. So you decide I'm gonna change it to six minutes. Uh, maybe you're flying, you know, full power all the time and you have to change it down to four minutes, okay? How do I start my timer? Okay, throttle stick. So I could, you know, use a switch to turn on and off my timer if I wanted to. Most people are going to use it with their throttle, okay? So the way I'm using it is when I move my throttle up and give it power, I want the timer to come on. Reason for that is the motor in the plane is using the vast amount of power from your battery, okay? The servos left and right is only using a slight percentage compared to the actual motor. That depends on the plane you're flying, of course, but generally speaking, when my throttle is off, I'm not counting any time on the battery. You know, maybe I land for a minute and then I'm waiting for somebody else to land or take off. I don't want that on my timer. So throttle stick, and here we can go over 25% is the default. Okay, um, I will change that down to 20. One time inhibit. That means that when I put it on, my timer starts. When I put it down, my timer stops. I can change this to active, okay? And that means once I turn it on, even if I land and turn off the power for two minutes, my uh, timer is gonna keep going. Um, you probably don't want that, but maybe you do if you have uh, hooked in video cameras and all kinds of things that drain your power. Okay, so, and then timer clear, pressing this button here. Okay, so now you'll see that in action, right? Here's my timer, five minutes. I put my throttle on and my timer starts counting down. So that's great. But when I pull my throttle back down to zero, my timer has stopped counting. So I like to do that. I'm flying around like this. That's great. My timer is going to tell me I only have five minutes of uh, time on my battery, okay? Um, that's just a timer to juice it. It's not, of course, it doesn't mean when it gets to zero, your battery is going to die. It's, it's you're, you're making a, a guess there, okay? And I reset it by hitting this button up here. So when I change the battery in my plane, I press that, and now my timer is reset. Okay, that's the timer set up. Okay. Um, I can also hold this button and change different lists if you want to fly with a different menu. For example, if I press this here, I am twist, I'm changing my volume up and down. Okay, it was not that loud in the start. Now it's at 95. Okay. Volume 95. Now another thing that you may want to do is audio events. Go into switch changes and add a new sound event. And I'm gonna go and pick this switch, H. Okay. And then, okay. So position zero is going to be. K. 
Okay, throttle cut off. And then position one, I will change this to throttle cut on. Okay, so now let me go back out of that. And as you'll see here, my throttle, when I switch this, okay, let me flip it up and I show you, there it is, okay, when I flip it. Throttle cut off. Throttle cut off. Now I can use my throttle and then I flip it again. Throttle cut off. So those things are not necessary, but they're kind of nice. And you can also do the same thing for your timer. For example, you can set it, hey, tell me when I have one minute left, tell me when I have two minutes left. And you can set it up so that it either gives you voice alerts or maybe it vibrates or maybe it beeps. Uh, you have all those choices to make. Okay, so that's everything almost set up on here. Now we need to confirm that it works on the plane. So let me switch to the plane and I'll show you how it works on the plane. Here we are now with the plane and I can use my list that I made earlier, which is going to be very helpful. Or of course I could bring the NX8 with me, but let's have a look here. So the first thing we're going to need here is a throttle, flaps, ailerons, elevator, and then throttle, T-H-R-O, okay? You can try to put these in nicely if you like, or just make a big mess, okay? Uh, dark brown wire is gonna be at the bottom. The orange wire is the control wire that's gonna be at the top. So we need to be careful now that we put it exactly into number one. There we go, my throttle is in number one. Okay, now my aileron, where's my aileron? I only have one aileron and a lot of planes, of course, will have two channels for the ailerons. Okay, aileron is going in there. Next one, if I check my list again, is elevator. So elevator is going in here. Again, make sure that you have the control wire up, the orange wire on the top for all of these. And rudder is next. Rudder is going into number four. So here's my rudder. That's going into number four. That's the wrong way around. This way is correct. Okay. That's going into number four. Stability mode. Here we go. Here's my SPU PPM mode. If you had a special receiver, you could actually just plug this in and nothing else. We don't at the moment. That's going in there to number five. And then my flaps are going in here to number six. Good. And then I put a little bit of Velcro and stick that in here somewhere so that it's nice. Let me get a battery and I can show you how that works. Hey, yes, I know this is an IC5 connector and this is not, but somehow they fit. Okay, now, uh -uh, before I do this, what should I do? I should take off the propeller blade so that I don't chop my arms off, okay? So let's do that. Okay, propeller blade is off. Now I, this is because I have the camera, but just keep your hands clear of everything there. And now that's the battery signal wire, which we're not using, so it doesn't matter. Okay, that's the wrong way around. This is the right way. One is flat, one is kind of round and Let's check it. Okay, so it's not it's not bound to the throat or to the uh, okay, it's not bound yet. So the next thing I want to do here is press the bind button. So I'll press and hold the bind button, and now you see the light is flashing. Let's go back to the transmitter. So now my plane is all set up, so we think, but there's always something to adjust normally. Let me go here to the menu and I go down here to bind. Okay, you can also use the bind button, but I'm going to use this. Click here and make sure my throttle is down. Make sure my throttle cut is cut off. Yes. And then we go to bind. And now it's going to connect to the plane. So the plane is making some sounds there and it's bound. Now I'm gonna show you the plane just so you can see the control surfaces. So now we jump over here, you can see the plane. There's a battery in it, lights are on, receiver's in, it's bound to my transmitter. So for this, let me pick this up and show you what I'm going to do. Okay, all I'm gonna do now is test the ailerons, okay? So aileron left, and you can see the left 
aileron is going down which is pushing the wing up and the right aileron is going up which is pushing that wing down so that's the wrong way around okay that's backwards i don't want that let me check my flaps flaps are up take off flaps take off flaps okay and then full flaps and i have of course take my flaps. one flaps second out. delay which take is what i flaps. like you may flaps like to out. change that to something else now my rudder left right that's great okay and now let's check my elevator so pulling back brings the nose up okay so tail is going down nose is going up that's correct okay and now if i push it forward you can see it's going to drive the tail of the plane up the nose down so that's correct so basically everything here i'm very happy with let me make sure my throttle is at zero throttle cut off throttle cut is off now and i give it some power and there we go it's got power okay throttle cut throttle cut on throttle cut on so one thing that i do need to change is obviously my ailerons are going in the wrong direction so let's put this back on the desk and i show you that okay, here we are back on the transmitter and we want to fix the problem of the ailerons being backwards so let me click down here on this button gonna go to servo setup gonna go over here to the travel page click on that and i'm gonna change it to the reverse page click again down here to my aileron you can see now click one time and now that is reversed and then we can click the back page and the back page again and now that's it it's reversed i can change to my monitor now here and i will see that it's going in the other direction left is going down to minus 70 right is going to plus 70. why is it only moving to 70 because I have my expo setting on so let's turn that off okay and now you see here it's going minus 100 plus 100 there we go okay so now we're back we have a view of the plane and now i can see if i go here to the right right wing is going down left wing is going up that's correct and the other way around that's correct okay and here that's still correct this is correct. Everything is correct on my flaps. Take off flaps. There flaps we go. Up. Okay, and my throttle, make sure it's down to zero. Throttle cut off. Throttle cut off. There we go. That's working. Throttle cut on. And now I have my stability mode. Okay, so let's check that this is working, right? So here we are at the plane. The plane is now in a tilted position, as you can see, and I'm just flying left and right, okay? Flying normally. Now, if I wanna put it in stability mode, or auto leveling mode, or safe mode, whatever you like to call it, you'll see that the plane will try to level itself. So this aileron is going to point upwards because the plane is gonna to try to level itself. So let's do that, okay? There we go. Now it's in the safe mode and you can see this is pointing up. So it's trying to bring this wing down, right? When I move the plane to a level position, there we go. Now you see this is level because it doesn't need to correct the position of the plane. So it's always good to test that. Let's move back here to the tail. Now it's level, moved up a little bit, just a tiny bit. It's just trying to, it's just trying to level the plane. So that's the safe mode on and off. And uh, of course, here's my dual rates and my expo. So if I go full, okay, let's move the camera again. All right, now I'm back. You can see one of these. If I move this, this is going to be my full rates, right? 100% that we programmed gives me full elevator control. If I change the rates, you see, now it moves less and less. So now I can go full left and right. I don't have that much aileron moving. So, uh, you know, gentler turns probably. Yeah. 
And of course, if there's suddenly you find an obstacle in front of you or something, you may want to turn it off. So here again, that's the max. When I turn off my Expo and Jewel Reds, there we go, now I have full. So that's an example of that working. Great, uh, that's everything I can think of to get you guys set up with this on the NX8 and using the uh, Spectrum AR620. I hope you enjoy the video, I hope it's helpful, and uh, yeah, enjoy flying. Okay, see you for the next one, guys. Have a great day, bye.